Hi everyone, I am 31 years old from over here and you might know me as how to play 1337. I will tell you about the invisible side of YouTube, why I started this channel, why I focus on War Thunder, how videos are created and where I was gone. For many years, just like any gamer, I faced a dilemma. If I go to job, I won't be able to use that time to play video games. But if I don't go there, I won't be able to play either. Because, as it turns out, people need food to remain alive and electricity to power up the PC. So my logic was simple. If job stands in the way of gaming, I have to quit job and start robbing banks. But that's I hear it can be a bit dangerous and illegal practice in some countries, so I decided to try to get money in the way I saw other people on internet do. It's either Pornhub or YouTube. So I looked into my pants and decided to create just another one of tens of millions gaming channels. Instead of creating a channel about everything and nothing at the same time and competing with everyone that creates gaming content, I decided to concentrate my efforts on a certain game. The first time I tried this game called War Thunder was a long time ago, when even its name was different. World of Planes. Because there were only planes back then, and all I did was occasionally flying biplanes. I wasn't very big fan of this game, but I like planes. So over time I kept returning to check out what's new, until eventually I got an invite to join closed beta test for tanks. A lot of people who were playing World of Tanks, which was the only tank game back then, were waiting for this moment, because some time ago Gaijin introduced the idea of having planes, tanks and ships in the same game, and even in the same battle which was a totally insane idea back then. Even World of Tanks with all their budget and record-breaking popularity couldn't make it because of their engine limitations. Back then I was mostly playing MMORPG games, such as Lineage 2 or World of Warcraft. But since the tanks came out, I kept returning to War Thunder on a regular basis and for longer periods of time. Technology advanced, new games were created, and War Thunder wasn't staying in place either. Gaijin kept experimenting, introducing the new mechanics and updating graphics to keep the game fresh, even despite it's been over 10 years now. So when I decided to take first steps to switch from regular job to a YouTube, I knew that I must focus on the game that I won't get bored in a few months and will want to come back again and again. War Thunder was ideal for that. I was watching War Thunder YouTubers and I already saw what other people do, what they tell about vehicles or game mechanics, and it wasn't some rocket science that only professional competitive players would know. Most of the people were looking for entertainment or some basic information that everyone who spent some time in War Thunder already knows. So looking at existing YouTubers, I knew what kind of videos I could make and what viewership I can expect if I simply repeat what others do. Furthermore, I had ideas how I could improve those videos. As a YouTube user myself, I was often disappointed when long videos contained almost no useful information, or when something is being explained with words instead of just showing it on the screen. I had an impression that most people don't have a plan for their videos, just speaking what's on their mind at that moment with a list of bullet points in the best case scenario. And as someone who doesn't speak much, since I don't have that many thoughts in my head, I cannot imagine how I could talk for a few minutes about nothing. I already knew that if I'm about to start making videos, I will need a script. That's also the reason why I don't stream. Writing everything down first would make main ideas in videos coherent, logically connected, which would also allow me to stand out among others. 
Also, as someone who mostly played arcade battles back then, I felt that there wasn't enough content dedicated to this game mode, which gave me an edge over those who don't cover this aspect of the game. And finally, these tank games are very popular in Russia. And as someone who freely speaks Russian, if I saw that certain topics were generating a lot of views in Russia and there was no one talking about them on English YouTube, I was able to be the one who introduces these things to similar audience. So with all these ideas in mind, I recorded the first video and it was absolute bullshit. It was a complete failure. I showed almost nothing and the sound revealed that when I speak, I always produce these weird sounds. And no one watched that video anyway. Which was totally fine with me. This is the start I expected. Over time, I've learned to remove background noise, how long should be the clips to keep viewers engaged, and most importantly, how not to sound so boring like I'm just reading a text, which is exactly what I do in my videos, but having at least some emotions wouldn't hurt. Eventually, the first viewers came to watch what I have to show, and YouTube's creator studio showed me what videos they came from, and the content they were watching before clicking on my video was something that showed me an invisible side of YouTube. I saw videos where nothing happens. 3 minutes of average gameplay, no commentary, you can hear someone breathing and clicking keyboard buttons, that's it. You don't see such content often. When did the last time you saw such low effort videos that don't even have thumbnails? YouTube's algorithm in recommendations or search results always shows something that is at least somewhat watchable. So I wasn't expecting that something so bad exists. And those kind of videos had couple of hundreds of views, which back then was a few times more than I had on my whole channel. This made me feel optimistic. If content like that exists and hundreds of people find it interesting, it's just a matter of time until algorithm starts promoting my content. Eventually, I started to get 5 views a day, then 50, then few hundred, and one of the videos became so popular that it jump-started the whole channel. I was obsessed about YouTube. I couldn't wait to get back from work to start making videos and used all my weekends playing, writing and recording, and YouTube algorithm was very generous to me, promoting videos like crazy. Until I got tired. I started to make videos not because I want to, but because I had to. I started a YouTube channel to avoid repetitive routine at work, but now War Thunder and YouTube started to become that thing I was trying to escape. Couple of evenings playing the game, one day writing a script, one day editing, the same thing next week and next week and next week. It was unsustainable. I started to play other games more to avoid making new content and War Thunder in general. So gaps between videos started to appear and they become longer and longer until I stopped fighting myself and as you know now, I was gone for a year. During this time I got a new PC. There were quite a lot of games I missed, so I caught up with most of them mostly completing the campaign and jumping to another one. VR gaming came into my life, which in my opinion is the future of gaming. I've spent hundreds of hours in Skyrim VR. Skyrim, which I played on flat screen many times, but this is the first time I completed pretty much everything. Game worlds in virtual reality are a completely different experience which took me very far away from my everyday life. Eventually, I became rested. I felt that I would like to check out what's new and maybe make some videos. Gaijin, as always, keeps delivering the updates with vehicles faster than I can review them. They even started to copy-paste tanks in new nations 
giving me time to catch up, and I couldn't even keep up with all the different vehicles they introduced. So what next? This time I've decided to do things a bit differently. I won't push myself to release a video every week like before, and I don't want to stick to one type of content like War Thunder vehicle reviews, because it gets repetitive over time. And at the same time, I definitely don't want to return to what's considered a usual job. Going to work is one star out of five, would not recommend. So I will try to find a sustainable way to release a new content and maybe on some completely random channel, totally unrelated to this one, you might find a video that would explain where I was resting from War Thunder. It's definitely not me managing that channel, but there seems to be correlation between me getting tired of vehicle reviews and how often game reviews on that channel appears. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Find an activity you like and enjoy your life.